Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about knowledge. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Hi Frederick, thank you for another great and informative video. No worries. I had a question. When you suggest to, to know... Oh, yeah, to, for context, this was posted on a video where which is called what can a Java developer do to help their career and if I remember correctly the short version of that is basically that uh, Java is a fairly stable language if you know the tool like the frameworks uh, like the standard frameworks such as say Spring or something similar to that uh, and like the general stack application developers uh, work with that's usually good enough but you should also consider the surrounding ecosystem of tooling because back-end development is pretty big if you consider ops and like the tooling related to infrastructure etc etc and so the question then becomes when you suggest that you should know kubernetes docker ci and cd tools uh, uh, like Ansible and Jenkins. Well, technically Ansible is not really a CI or CD tool. Jenkins is, on the other hand. Uh, how much knowledge in terms of depth should be enough to put on your resume? Also, considering that this will be self-taught from an online course's tutorial perspective and not actual exposure on, uh, on working from scratch on a project. So, uh, this is this is complicated in a sense because the it really comes down to what you're selling yourself as um, so an example would be if I were to tell you today that I know Python development well technically that is true and if you go and check my CV on LinkedIn I think I even have that like past Python coding tutorial thing or like the language skill check thing that they have now what the LinkedIn people will not tell you is that when I took that uh, I hadn't been writing Python for at least five years minimum I think and the Python development that I have done uh, is usually smart scripts, did it in school, etc, etc. And a few of those questions, so you have 30 something seconds or something to answer, or I think a minute, it took me, I, I googled the answer within the time frame I needed in order to answer certain questions because I can't remember all the interfaces for doing things in Python. And so if I were to go to a, to a development company or like an IT company and say, hey, I am a Python developer and they check and they expect me to have skills that are on par with that of someone with my years of experience, but within Python, I will never be able to produce that because my, although I might know how to program in other languages and I know enough about software development to know how to get productive very quickly, I simply don't, ha it's sort of like being rusty or like to, to be a great distance runner on, you know, a long distance runner versus a short distance runner. Sure, you can run, but it's not the thing that you have specialized in, right? And so when you ask the question, how much do you need to know? It really comes down to what are you trying to go for? Are you trying to become a DevOps op DevOps person or something like that? Or are you trying to just complement your existing skill set? Now, this question is post by someone who I in the past have sort of given away that they are a Java developer with some years of experience so I can guess that this is more to complement your skill set and if that is the case then the things that you need to know is usually what are these tools how are they used can you run the command like the common commands it's sort of the same thing you would expect anybody who has a has exposure has had exposure to any given tool when i interview front-end developers for the for example let's say in this case it's usually react we interview for then i will ask them what are the common hooks in react what are they used for why that when would you will you use that uh, like the the uh, use effect hook versus use state hook for example or things along those lines where like concrete questions that are relevant to being productive within the tool and based on the 
profile that we're looking for will going to like increase the complexities of the questions and so forth and so forth. But and the same thing is true for you. If you wanted to learn, say, let's say for the sake of argument that you're going to learn Docker. Well, if you take a course about Docker and you put that on your resume, and then I start asking you questions about, well, could you explain to me sort of what, a, like, what is Docker? Can you explain what a container is and sort of uh, how do you usually work with Docker? Like, what are you usually using it for? And you can't tell me how to run any of the basic commands. You don't know how to, like, what a container actually is. You don't know how it's used or anything like that. Then, well, then you just have a piece of, like, you have a Udemy course where you have an intro. Then you are as about as useful to me as an employer as someone who has taking a day long course. So when you ask how much depth you need, it really is not about how deep you need to go. It is, do you have the skills and knowledge required to meet the expectations of the employer? As with me and Python, if I'm, empl if I'm trying to get a job as a junior level Python developer, or I mean, in my case, it might be sellable for me to say that, well, I'm not the, the world's best Python developer, but they're going to go, yeah, but you're still like an experienced software developer. We're fine with that. You can sort of learn that thing. Uh, but in another company, it might be that, no, actually, we really need someone who is super, super good in Python. Then I'm not, the, I'm not going to be able to meet those expectations, right? And the same thing goes for you. If they're looking for someone who knows how to use Docker, for example, because for, uh, they have a database that is containerized or an app that is containerized, well, then the basics is that you know how to use a Docker file, how to start, like use the CLI or like whatever tool you're using, how to start a container, how to you know expose ports, etc., etc. Kubernetes is the same sort of beast. If you're going to use Kubernetes, because you can use it in many ways, you could be a DevOps person or an ops person, and then you pretty much need to know a lot about Kubernetes because the goal for the company is for you to be the person who supports everybody else and handles deployments, etc., etc. So now you sort of need to really know your stuff, and that might be I mean a certification or something like that for you. But if you're like myself, for example, who has who uses primarily Kubernetes because my environments that I need in order to do my job as a software developer, they are easy, easy. It's easier for me to use Kubernetes than anything else. Then you might just need to know how to, for example, consume the Kubernetes, uh, the kubectl CLI, and actually, you know, what is a pod, what um, what is a service, like uh, what is an ingress and an egress, like all of these sorts of concepts that Kubernetes has. But you may not need to go so far as to know, for example, how to optimize uh, workers, How what, what is a kubelet, what is um, um, like uh, w w what is the like what is the, like how is the overall architecture of Kubernetes? How does that actually work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like there are many more in-depth questions that you could have to know about, like how do you set up a load balancer with Kubernetes? And so it's really impossible for me to say how deep because it really comes down to what are you trying to achieve. And the same thing goes for Jenkins. Do you know how to set up Jenkins? Do you know how to set up a pipeline, etc.? Are you going to do that sort of thing? Or is it that you just need to know how to work with Jenkins? What, it, what is it, etc., etc.? What are you going for? So my general tip here is to ask that question. If you're learning something and you need to be able to uh, to say that you're going to have that thing on your resume, the real root question is, what expectations are you trying to meet? That is the thing that is important because that is the thing that is going to dictate when you have met your goal. And that's where it's so difficult for someone who doesn't. This is like sort of like the even asking the question means to me sort of that this person doesn't actually have a goal. They don't see the benefits. And so now if you're not careful, you're just going to go and try to learn things for the sake of learning because this is these sorts of questions are usually more, you know, you're scared than that it's useful to you. And that is always a recipe for disaster, in my opinion, because a lot of people come ask and come and ask me these questions about how much do I need to study in order to be a software developer? How much do I need to know in order to say that I know this stuff? And I go... Do you understand how to get things done? How to make things with the thing that you are trying to learn? That's usually not what, uh, because 
anybody who is trying to use to use these tools usually have a goal of some sort and if you don't even know what the goal is then you're basically just learning something in the hope that someone will tell you what you need this thing for and that is never in my experience a good idea every single software developer I know who is worth anything has learned the tools that they have learned because they are trying to solve a problem that this tool is a good fit for solving and when you know what the what you're trying to achieve and you know how to achieve it with the tool well then you know enough to put it on your resume as an example people ask me all the time when can I put a programming language on my CV well it's actually very easy if you're gonna be an like a back-end developer or something like that you need to be able to make a rest API or you might need to and you need to be able to sort of fulfill the requirements of what a software developer or like a back-end developer does which is unit testing API development etc etc right and when you can do all that basic stuff in the programming language then you can put it on your resume because you can technically fulfill the normal expectations of what someone might be looking for when they're looking for a back-end developer so what I want you to take away from this is that the uh, answering things like how much Kubernetes do you need to know it's sort of like how fast do you have to be in order to win the Olympics? It sort of depends. How fast are the other guys and girls who are competing? And the same thing goes with CI, Ansible, Jenkins, etc. You're just like, in my opinion, you're just sort of throwing stuff at me and it's an indicator that, in my world, this is an indicator that you're just trying to add things to your CV without any reason. And then you might as well just take a course and put it on your CV because you're gonna crash and burn. Uh, with that mindset as a software developer. It is the so it's the collector's idea where the more you collect the more valuable you think that your collection is when the reality is that that is not how skilled engineers work. Skilled engineers know their shit and they earn the uh, like the knowledge that these sorts of tools bring like the, the benefits of these tools by solving problems and you don't present the problem to me you're just trying to figure out a way to enhance your CV or your resume which is as I said it, it's not gonna work because the any you can put as many things as you want on that CV and if you're lucky they're not going to check you on the things but if you're unlucky they're going to and that's why I was telling you the story about Python I have Python on my CV but if somebody asks me about it I'm gonna have to be completely honest with them and say that no I can't because if they taste me on it I'm not gonna be able to produce at like a senior level etc etc but that's not my intention and the same thing goes for you so ask yourself that question why are you learning all these tools if it's just that you need to know about them so that you can put them on your CV and say that yeah if like if for example docker because docker is a very useful tool for standard development because containerization helps you even in just local development well then learn docker try it out put run a database in it like just do some basic things with it and then put it on your CV and then when somebody asks you about it then just be transparent but when it comes to like doc to Kubernetes Jenkins like all of this sort of stuff where I mean why would you learn Jenkins as a Java developer like on uh, to set that up if all you're gonna do is to consume it doesn't make sense and that's why I, t I sort of referred back to you what are you trying to do are you trying to s become a DevOps person or are you trying to just learn what Jenkins is and how it like sort of how do you deploy things with it etc etc if that is the case well then learn how to do that learn how to work with Jenkins and deploy some code with Jenkins and then that should be pretty much all you need to do but on the other hand if you're trying to actually become something that is useful to like an employer because usually using Jenkins has a lower requirement than setting it up and actually owning it and being an ops person well if that is the case then you pretty much need to know as the thing I just told you how do you set all of that up how do you configure Jenkins how do you uh, or Ansible like how do you use Ansible to provision machines etc etc how do you set up Kubernetes and set up a cluster all of these sorts of things right and that's why I can't tell you how much in terms of depth you need to know what I can tell you is that if you want to go the full length on this sort of stuff then you're basically trying to become a DevOps person and then a Udemy course is laughably too little experience to say that the, uh, you can put that on your CV a Udemy course will give you enough uh, knowledge to know the concepts 
of what say Kubernetes like because we were guys we're talking about tools that are enormous uh, but they're not going to make you into an industry professional so once again where do you want to be do you want to have an introductionary level understanding of the thing put it on your CV and say that that is your level or do you want to be a DevOps person well then you're going to have to do a lot more than a Udemy course have a great day